Hey folks, I'm back with uh, round five from the 2021 National Open in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, in round five, I was paired against Grandmaster Benjamin Gladura, uh, originally from Hungary, who now has been living in the U.S. And uh, yeah, he's a really strong player, 26-30. Um, I actually played Benjamin once a couple of years ago in the Reykjavik Open, and uh, that was a that was a very tough game. He like completely outplayed me um, in that one. So I was hoping to put up a better fight in this one. Unfortunately, I ended up losing it, but it was a really interesting game, and I felt like I got a lot um, out of it. So hopefully you guys can uh, find something instructive here as well. So it was a, uh, yeah, Fian Keto King's Indian, d4 knight f6, c4 g6, g3, and um, I saw that he had played this uh, before, but I really wasn't sure what to expect for the opening, because in our previous game he played e4, and I'm pretty sure he can make any number of moves on, on the first move. So... Um, in general, uh, I don't see him as someone who actually tries to really kill you out of the opening. Instead, it seems like he just wants a position with some pressure and, and hope to uh, outplay the opponent. So I wasn't too worried about the opening, but I did actually come under some serious pressure. Uh, so I played with, uh, the line with knight c6 and uh, e5. This is now a, a big main line in this position. And he goes for d5. Um, I go knight b8, and the idea of dropping the knight back is to then play a5, knight a6, and uh, develop the knight to c5, which is a really nice square. And here he hits me with this move c5. So this is not the main move in the position. Usually white just plays e4, black goes a5, white brings the knight to d3, and then we get something like this. Here black goes knight d7, and prepares to put uh, this knight on, on c5, and then black plays for f5, kind of like typical King's Indian play. Um, so I have seen this move c5 before, but pretty much all I knew about it um, at the time of the game was that it's not supposed to be dangerous. Uh, black should play immediate uh, knight a6 uh, and not waste time with a5, but just get the pieces out. And after knight a6 takes takes, I believe the position is supposed to be equal. Um, my general plan is to go like bishop d7, rook c8. And compared to actually other king's Indian positions, this is one where black can actually fight on the queen side because white's bishop on g2 is kind of blocked off. You know, it's on the king side, defending the king. It's going to be really difficult to launch a successful king side attack, but this does give black uh, a chance to, to play on the queen side. Um, so he goes a4, and at this point I'm pretty much out of book and, and just thinking on my own. Um, I decide to go bishop d7. In my experience, the bishop is uh, typically well placed here. Again, it kind of fights for uh, the queen side. And um, here he plays queen to b3 which, uh, as I found out after the game, is uh, a novelty. And uh, yeah, this was actually already a very tough moment for me, because uh, I know like the position is supposed to be you know, roughly equal, or black is supposed to be okay, um, but I actually am not really sure how, how to play it. I mean, I quickly realized his idea, uh, if I go knight c5, is to go queen a3, and then eventually kick the knight um, with b4. Uh, and I was thinking if I play here and a5, which is kind of like you know most natural thing to do, I wasn't quite sure if I want to commit to this yet, as white generally has this plan to go like knight d2, knight c4, and then I felt like, you know, I might have some weaknesses here um, with this knight coming to c4. I'm not totally sure if I want to commit to a5. So because of that, you know, I spent uh, some time in this position and considered pretty much every uh, possible way of defending the pawn and not defending the pawn. <laughs> so I looked at b6 and wasn't too happy about it, felt weakening. Um, I thought about rook b8. But my issue with this one is that when white plays like bishop e3, for example, this pawn will be hanging and then I might have to end up playing b6 anyway. Knight b5 could also be an issue as well. Um, I didn't want to put my queen on the c file because, of course, white just develops super fast and brings the rook there and I felt like my queen would get in trouble. Um, and I even considered uh, moves that don't defend the pawn, like queen a5, for example, defends the pawn um, tactically because queen takes b7, knight c5, white's queen ends up uh, trapped. But my issue with queen a5 is that, okay, white will go bishop d2, and like, how long do I really <laughs> want to leave my queen on a5? So I thought about something like queen b4, but yeah, you know, felt very, uh, let's say, artificial. Like, you know, my, my position's kind of hanging on by a thread, and I really wasn't sure. You know, white backs up, and then again, I have to deal with uh, the discovered attack. <clears throat> so I think I also considered um, some moves like... Uh, just like rook c8 here, for example, and then if queen takes b7, uh, knight c5, let's say queen drops back, rook b8, just trying to get some compensation for the pawn, ultimately couldn't make anything work. So after, you know, looking at, I don't know, 
four or five different options, I finally said, okay, let's just play the natural move knight c5. He went queen a3. And here I realized, uh oh, he's actually threatening knight takes e5. And I'm just losing a pawn. So if I go a5 here, he just takes on e5, and I have uh, no compensation. I'm just losing losing a very, very healthy extra pawn here. Um, so I already felt like, uh oh, <laughs> I messed up. Because my knight's on c5, I have to deal with this threat first, and then this is going to give white time um, to, to play b4 and just chase my knight away. So it's kind of back to the drawing board. And um, so I, I started thinking again. And eventually, I feel like I, I came up with a very reasonable continuation. I played the move queen e7. And of course, I'm now defending uh, the pawn. And my point was that on uh, b4, uh, I would drop back. Oh, excuse me. I would actually play knight e4 here. And uh, he doesn't really have any way of exploiting this knight. So takes, takes. And uh, I actually think black is already fine. I can go f5 here, um, fight for the c file. And yeah, I think I'm totally OK. So after some thought, he goes knight d2. And um, I think really decent move because, of course, he covers the e4 square. And um, again, if I play a5 here, then OK, knight comes to c4 one day and really not sure how to deal with this weakness. You know, this is why I kind of want my, my queen on d8. Knight can often come to e8 to defend the d6 pawn, and then black can expand like f5, e4. But here with my queen on e7, this one felt like kind of a, kind of an issue. Um, going back a bit, what I should have done, it turns out, on queen b3, is actually launch this pawn forward with e4. And this is like a thematic move in, in this kind of position, but it's never really clear to me when to play it, because of course the pawn can often end up just overextended. Um, so as it turns out, the, the point that black should be playing for here is, let's say white goes knight g5, just going after the pawn. Uh, the idea would be to go knight c5, queen a3, and now important move bishop f5. And this is maybe the move I didn't really uh, consider so seriously in the game, um, because the point is now that my knight can retreat to d7. So on b4, I don't have to go back to this uh, passive a6 square, I can bring my knight to d7, e4 pawn is defended uh, tactically because work on a1 is hanging, and uh, this knight can eventually use the e5 square. I have, again, the c file. c4 square is a possible weakness. And actually, black is um, completely fine here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it shows kind of the power of prep. And it kind of shows, like, you shouldn't always look at what the engine thinks. Because, you know, the engine says, okay, black is totally fine after e4. But over the board, not knowing this idea, it's a very hard move psychologically to commit to, unless you're really, really sure of it. Because uh, again, it does feel like we're just overextending the pawn. But okay, objectively, that was that was the way to go. Uh, so knight d2, I played uh, rook fc8. So I used this rook because I felt like this rook could be needed on the queen side, either defending the a pawn or maybe supporting like some future um, b5 push or something. He goes b4, knight a6. And I wasn't like too concerned about this one because it's actually not so easy for white to make progress on the queen side. You know, whenever he pushes b5, he just gives me the c5 square back. So the knight is a little bit passive, but in the meantime, you know, I do have a plan. I want to go knight e8, f5, e4, and so on. Um, so he goes queen b3. This is the move I was expecting because he um, prepares to bring his other knight to c4. And here I really thought for a while on um, playing e4 in this position, which again was the best move. Um, but again, I really just wasn't sure about it. My idea was uh, on knight c4, if not knight c4, I'm turning e3, and I don't think white can allow that, so knight c4 felt forced. Uh, my idea was to play knight g4. And white has a lot of stuff hanging on the diagonal. Um, so he definitely can't take the e4 pawn, and in the, in the meantime I have a possible threat. Rook takes c4, queen takes c4, rook c8, and then knight on c3 is hanging. So if white goes like bishop b2, for example, then I felt like, okay, I go f5, and... I felt like black is absolutely fine. Uh, so I wasn't really worried about this one. The move that concerned me was bishop f4. Because now d6 is hanging. And I don't really want to play uh, knight e5 here. That didn't look uh, right to me. And then the tactics don't really work out. Like now if I take on c4 and go rook c8, white has queen takes e4. Really important move, hitting my queen. I have to take on e4, knight e4. I take on a1. Now the rook is defended, so white simply takes back. And this position looked uh, pretty dubious to me. I mean, I'm currently down a pawn. I can win a pawn back, but d6 is also hanging. And if I lose the d6 pawn, white gets like two very strong pawns in the center. I also lost my dark bishop, which is now a very strong piece. 
this position just felt extremely uh, bad to me. And indeed, this is uh, pretty bad for black. So what I missed uh, after bishop f4 uh, is that I can play bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, uh, and now really strong move g5. I mean, the idea didn't even pop into my head <laughs> on this one. Um, the point is I, I force the bishop back, and then I go knight e5, and then white uh, loses material. So uh, basically it means bishop f4 would actually be a tactical blunder. I don't think white can even play this move. Um, what my opponent would have done, I have no idea <laughs> in this position. Um, likely he would have he would have seen it, and, and, and probably he would have just ended up playing bishop e2, f5, and then black would be um, totally okay. So you see, this e4 move is very strong, but it you know requires you to see a number of tactical ideas to kind of justify it. And yeah, I just couldn't really ultimately make it work. Um, so I end up playing knight e8, which is definitely not the best move. But okay, I'm just following my strategic plan of trying to get f5, e4, and under uh, safer conditions. So knight c4, f5, and uh, here the engine actually suggests um, white to play e4. Which I found a little bit surprising because during the game I thought, well, I can just go f4 here, and white can't really take twice because uh, then I do get this trick with rook c4, rook c8, and I win two minor pieces for the rook. Um, but instead, Stockfish says, okay, white just goes bishop d2, and basically just doesn't believe in black's attack. Like I can push my pawns, but it's it's actually really hard to uh, to get anything going. And um, whenever I push g4, you know, white will already be developed and will be ready to just take on f4. And, uh, and win the pawn. So, as it turns out, it, not so easy for black to get the attack going here, um, but my opponent decided not to play this one. Um, it seems like he just didn't really want this structure where it you know, kind of feels like I'm getting this like King's Indian play, and instead he goes bishop e3, which is probably not the best way for white to uh, uh, get the advantage. In fact, I think already here, if I play e4, uh, black is very close to equal. Because my bishop opens up, white's bishop is shut down, and um, yeah, we both have our share of bad minor pieces, but yeah, strategically, I actually don't think black has too many issues here. As it happened, I ended up playing knight f6, so I'm just getting the knight back into the game, and maybe uh, intending knight g4. Uh, and here he went for a long think, and uh, while he was thinking, I realized, oh yeah, he's thinking about this knight b5 move. So th this is something that, you know, I really should have taken into consideration before I play knight f6. So I could have gone knight c7 here, for example, and avoided this one, or I could have played e4 and uh, avoided knight b5 for the time being. Um, so knight f6, by me, honestly, kind of a sloppy decision, because I, I didn't even, like, see this move coming. I, <laughs> I didn't know if it was going to be good or not, I just kind of, I did a little bit of calculation. I thought on knight b5 I could take, take, and, uh, and play knight c7, and I did see that, okay, he doesn't win the pawn because I uh, take on b5 at the end and my knight gets the d4. So that much I saw, um, but I didn't realize that he can uh, play for b6 here. And, um, okay, so obviously I started thinking about, about it after knight b5. I realize it's actually not so dangerous, but yeah, really something, you know, I should have looked at before it, like, you know, happened on the board. Um, so, so black is still okay. I take on b6, knight takes b6, rook takes a1. Uh, if knight takes c8, I have rook takes f1 check. And uh, white will take back with something, and queen can retreat. And yeah, material is equal. White does have the bishop pair, but I don't think it's a particularly good one because again, bishop on g2 is pretty much shut out of the game. It's a very passive piece. I'm going to go e4 at some point and try to bring the knight to e5. Basically, I felt like black should be okay in this position, and I think that's correct. Um, so of course, he just recaptures rook takes a1, and uh, now I play rook to b8. And yeah, during the game, you know, I really wasn't sure, but I, I didn't actually see how I'm losing this position. I mean, it looks passive. Knight on b6 is like covering both c8 and a8, but I didn't quite see how white gets in. And the position is pretty close, so much so that I actually kind of prefer having the um, two knights versus the, the bishop pair. Um, and I have a very clear plan. Again, I want to go knight g4, e4, and just kind of uh, improve my position, put the knight on e5, and so on. So he goes queen c4. Uh, which uh, I thought was a strong move. Knight g4, bishop d2, e4, uh, and now rook to c1. So of course he's going after my knight. Here I have a choice uh, between knight e8 and uh, knight a6. And I pretty much had decided on knight a6 um, for just the reason of trying to keep the knight on the queen side. I feel like the battle is happening on the queen side, 
if I go knight e8, I wasn't sure exactly where the knight is going from here. Uh, maybe f6, d7, but the, the point is, whether the knight goes to e8 or a6, it kind of has to stay there because I need to cover uh, the c7 entry square. And uh, either of these moves, it's like, okay, it looks like white's dominating the file, but really not clear how white actually makes progress because, again, white's queen can't get in, there's no entry square, and uh, my knight is coming to e5, you know, I'm going to be threatening e3 soon, so, um, yeah, really not obvious what white is doing here. But I decided on knight a6 because I just felt like, well, it just seems like the knight is actually more useful here than on e8, right? If I'm going to have to keep the knight on one of these bad squares, might as well keep it on a6. I block the a file, I put some pressure on uh, the b4 pawn, so he can't, like, really just do whatever he wants. And, of course, if b5, then my knight just gets fantastic square on c5. Um, but here he, he really shocked me. And he goes for this move knight to c8, which I saw was possible, but I really just didn't uh, didn't believe it could work. Um, his idea is that he's actually taking aim at the d6 pawn, and so after queen d8, um, he can consider b5 with the point knight, t knight c5, knight takes d6. And uh, so from afar, I actually felt like this wasn't uh, too dangerous, because I can take, and if queen takes c5, takes rook takes, uh, it seemed to me like I can actually win this pawn back um, very quickly. Actually, in this case, excuse me, I just have bishop d4. That was the point um, earlier, so he can't really, he doesn't even win the pawn. Uh, and instead, if he goes bishop f4, which I thought maybe is more critical, then I can go bishop e5, let's say take, take. He takes on c5 to win the piece back. Uh, and then I just have this resource with b6, rook d8, and I simply win back the pawn. And we can see the problem with white's bishop on g2 is that when all the pieces get traded off, you know, bishop is uh, shut out from the game. Um, then, he, I think he started uh, tanking around this point, and I realized actually that on b5, uh, knight c5, if he takes on d6, I can actually play a really clever move b6. And it turns out the knight on d6 is trapped, and uh, he doesn't really have a way of getting it out. Like if bishop f4, I think I can just go bishop e5 here. And the knight is simply simply trapped. I mean, he's going to have to sacrifice it for uh, another pawn or something. But but then black is just doing fantastic. I mean, it's really not going to be enough uh, for the piece. Knight on c5 is just way too good. So I think maybe, I'm just speculating here, maybe he, he kind of missed this b, b6 shot. And then when he was checking his, uh, you know, calculations, he suddenly realized, uh-oh, b6 and I'm in trouble. So he ends up uh, tanking here for quite a bit and plays the move bishop h3 which uh, I totally unexpect uh, wasn't expecting. Like, I just, I mean, I thought he's going to go for b5 or something, or I thought he had something in mind, but um, yeah, it seems like he maybe kind of like a small change of plans. He puts the bishop on h3, and yeah, it was really hard to resist just playing the immediate knight e5, because just <laughs> the move looks so natural. I hit the queen, you know, I get my knight to a good square, and, and yeah, obviously I don't really want to let him take on, on g4 here. Um, but the engine points out, you know, I missed actually uh, a big chance here with the move bishop to b2. And, and this one is very tactical, so I don't really blame myself for missing it. I just didn't even uh, consider this move. But the idea is that white goes um, rook c2, and he has to stay on the c-file because knight is kind of hanging and trapped. And now black goes knight e5. And so this is just what I didn't, you know, really... Uh, into it during the game because you know when you play bishop b2 rook c2 you just kind of assume okay you're gonna have to move your bishop back i didn't really like try to calculate this one super concretely but the point is the queen actually has no squares he has to go queen to b3 now the bishop can come back to d4 uh, now the knight is hanging and and white doesn't really have such a good way of defending this one uh, i think he has to play bishop c3 here with the idea of uh, taking and getting back to the c file uh, but I can just desperate on f2, win a pawn, take on c8, and yeah, he has the two bishops, but uh, position is pretty closed. I have an extra pawn, white structure is really weak, black would just have a very significant advantage. Uh, if instead white tries e3, then black can throw a knight f3 check, and uh, let's say king g2, bishop e5, and actually white is just losing material, because knight is still hanging, and then on queen c4, I'm just taking on d2, and, and the rook is overloaded. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, really kind of a random tactical chance. Uh, I wasn't really expecting to have something here. Maybe if, if I looked for it, I, I might have found it. But 
yeah, kind of unfortunate. So I just go knight e5. So queen c2. And uh, here, yeah, I went into a bit of a think because I realized, like, he uh, doesn't really have much of a threat. Um, because if uh, b5 here, well, let's say, like, one move I was considering actually was h5. Because I, I knew, you know, at some point he's going to want to break with g4. Or at least I had the feeling if my knight ever leaves e5. So h5 kind of made strategic sense. Number one, giving my king an escape square in case of any uh, back rank issues. But secondly, kind of restricting the bishop further. And so if he goes b5, knight c5, and uh, takes this one, I calculated that I could play uh, b6 in this position. Now the knight doesn't get trapped, he can come out with knight c4. So I can just take, queen takes d5, and I feel like, again, black is absolutely fine. Knight on c5 is just uh, beautiful, and yeah, very difficult for white to do anything here. And if anything, like, maybe black is uh, the one pushing. Um, so, ultimately, I, I wasn't really sure what to do, because it was one of those things where white doesn't really have a threat. Like, basically, if, he, if I allow him to play b5, knight c5, like, I can just go in for the same line. But I did want to improve my position somehow, so I, I really wish I'd played h5, but I end up going for rook a8. Which was honestly kind of silly because it actually it actually allows b5, and the point is after knight c5 takes takes or takes b6, here after knight c4 uh, I don't have queen takes d5 anymore because the b6 pawn was hanging. So by moving my rook to the a file, I'm actually making this work for white. Um, during the game, I actually thought I would have uh, this option and rook a4, thinking that I'm going to win the pawn back next, but I missed that he can just play bishop b4. He just puts himself in a pin, but he holds on to his extra pawn, and I don't think black has anything for it. So, that was kind of unfortunate, and I ended up having to go for kind of the backup plan, um, which is to just go into the endgame. Which I thought would be okay for me, I just wasn't sure. You know, I, I would much rather play this position where, you know, white doesn't have bishop b4 if he has to play something like queen c2. I take this, I felt like, is just 100% safe. Um, whereas the end game I felt was okay, but I, I wasn't, again, wasn't 100% sure. Um, so anyway, I end up taking on d6, queen takes c5, takes, takes, and again I have this trick with b6. The rook has to leave the d-pawn, and next is rook d8 coming. So for example, rook c7, rook d8, if white plays rook b7, I take on d5, and uh, I get a very important tempo on the bishop, I, I can take on b5. And basically I just wasn't afraid of anything here, because it felt like bishop on h3 is again out of the game. It's almost like I have an extra minor piece on the queen side. Um, and if rook c6, which I thought was kind of interesting, uh, just uh, to sacrifice the exchange, I think there was a couple issues with this one, but actually I felt like I can just take it. And uh, on bc6, bishop e5, uh, I didn't see how white's pawns are, are making progress. If bishop f4, for example, I can trade, and king just comes in, or let's say king f7, more accurate, d6, king e6, and white's pawns are, are just gone. Um, so exchange sack wasn't working, he ends up playing rook c7, uh, rook d8, and now bishop c3. And uh, yeah, this is one of those moments where it's like, it's so tricky psychologically, because I actually felt like I I'm completely fine, I'm just totally getting out. And in my mind, he made this move bishop c3 to uh, just make a move, maybe even trade uh, bishop for knight and like make a draw with like the opposite color bishops. Uh, basically, just like him kind of like kind of giving up in a sense, like he has no way of fighting for the advantage. Uh, if bishop e3, for example, he could have also played, um, then let's say I take, and everything gets traded off, and this is another way where I think, you know, pretty much uh, neither side has much, but it, I mean, if anyone is better, I think actually, you know, black is the one with the knight kind of on, on one side of the board. Uh, usually knights are, are pretty good uh, when all the pawns are, again, on the king side. Um, but yeah, bishop c3, I really just completely missed his uh, idea, and I uh, end up taking on d5, and then he hits me with g4. And, and now I realize, oh, well, that, that was the point of bishop to c3. He's pinning the knight to g7, and he comes up with this fantastic shot, g4. And if I take this one, he can just take back, or I also thought bishop g2 might be possible, but he just takes, this is a big threat. And uh, if I take, rook takes g7, king f8 takes on h7, uh, I felt like I'm, I'm definitely a lot worse here. Even if I take on b5, uh, we have equal pawns, but all my pawns are scattered and weak. He has a really strong bishop versus my knight. 
and it looked really, really dangerous. Even some move like bishop d4 and e3 and like the knight is kind of uh, lacking squares. So yeah, this one felt like uh, a real struggle and I didn't want to go into that. Uh, but I didn't know what to do. If I push past f4, then of course he goes g5 and now bishop e6 is just an uh, absolutely killer threat. And basically black is just under huge pressure. So I had something like, I don't know, 15, 16 minutes here. Of course, I realized it was a critical moment, so I spent like maybe uh, 10 or 12 minutes at this point. And um, yeah, I simply just couldn't really find anything uh, satisfactory. Uh, as it turns out, what I should have done back here uh, was uh, it would have been a lot stronger to make um, just a very calm move knight f7. And I'm offering the trade of bishops. If white uh, ignores the trade, uh, then I can just take on d5 at some point. Um, and if bishop g7, king takes g7, then let's say rook b7, for example, I can take here, rook takes b6. Here he does get the extra pawn, but after knight d6, I think like the pawn is just, uh, just going to be lost very quickly. The bishop simply can't uh, support it in time. So here black would be totally fine. And that was kind of maybe the easiest way for me to finally hold the position. But yeah, I kind of just well, didn't realize that my opponent has some tricks up his sleeve. You know, I took this pawn without really thinking about what he's going to do. And then, of course, after g4, I thought back to that moment where I could have played h5. And I started kicking myself like, man, why didn't I just make this h5 move? Like, I knew this was going to uh, come at some point, but it came at the most unexpected time. So, yeah, I considered a lot of stuff here again. Um, as it turns out, the... Black is still okay if black finds a very accurate uh, move, rook takes b5 here, uh, but the point after g takes f5, not to recapture because then white's bishops open up and uh, white is just uh, crushing here, but to play this very strong move, rook c5. And the point is that I force the rook trade, and because of the threat of knight f3 check and going into the opposite color bishop endgame, um, white doesn't have time to do anything here. So after fg, for example, I mean, I can take back as well, but um, this one does make a draw. Although, actually, in the game, I probably would have just taken this one um, because I, I'm not sure if I would have realized knight f3 is actually that good. But objectively, this is a clean way for black to make a draw. The point is takes, takes. Well, I can take on h7 and take on e4. He has two extra pawns, um, but the problem is he's not going to be in time to get them going. Black is just playing king g5, king f4, and getting the dark squared blockade. And even though he has three pawns on the king side, um, it's yeah very hard for white to push because I still have the c pawn that he has to deal with. And if he plays f4, for example, then I go bishop d2, and I force the pawn up to the light squares so that I can create this blockade. And then, yeah, basically white's just not in time here um, to do anything. You know, bishop will sit on e5, king can sit somewhere on h4 and or f4, and... Uh, yeah, basically the plan could be like bishop e5, king f4, white will have to defend this pawn with the bishop, then I'll go c4, and yeah, basically make it very, very hard for white to make uh, any progress. Again, during the game, I'm not sure if I would have gone for this one. I feel like I would have been a little bit nervous entering this position, not knowing that it's uh, a draw. Um, but after f hg, I think black is still more or less okay here, because um, white still has to deal with this threat of knight f3 check, and... Um, of course, I have the c-pawn that I can start pushing, you know. And if white trades uh, dark square bishops, then uh, it could start to get dangerous, right, with the uh, with the outside pass pawn. Um, so so that was that was the way. Rook takes b5, and then ignoring gf and just going rook c5. I mean, computer defense, but maybe was was findable. Uh, I also consider like rook d1 check here, and uh, or let's say f4, and then rook d1 check and f3, but. I think White's King um, was simply getting out, taking first, of course, and then here, and you yeah, have check even King h4, and I just didn't see any counterplay, and in the meantime, Bishop e6 is coming, and everything is under heavy pressure. So I ended up playing Knight f7, and uh, I didn't feel great about this move, but I, I just couldn't find anything else that was satisfactory, um, and I'm just trying to trade the bishops off. He takes on f5. If I take on c3, he can throw in uh, F fg, and... I didn't like the looks of this, um, so I take back. Now rook c8 check. And uh, I think originally my idea was to go bishop f8 here, um, but then I realized like bishop b4, knight d6, this was the plan at least, he can just take this one, which I just totally missed. And then rook takes, bishop takes f5. And uh, yeah, 
position is collapsing. He's also threatening this one. Um, so I can try knight d8, but then he uh, takes here, takes on f5, takes uh, this one uh, with check. So white wins a pawn, and um, I mean... I wasn't sure if this rook end game is uh, drawable or not. I, I felt like, okay, objectively, probably it's close to a draw, but yeah, I just wasn't really sure. And then during the game, you don't really want to enter something where you feel like, yeah, you might be suffering or just like losing outright. Um, as it turns out, black can take this pawn on b5 and uh, play this position. And uh, I think the engine uh, believes black is actually holding a draw here. It's, it seems like a really tough one, but I analyzed a little bit, and it's kind of instructive uh, what black needs to do. So, for example, if white plays f4, um, the right technique is to go rook f5, and uh, eventually just try to bring this rook back behind the pawn. So maybe b5, king c5, b4, but basically rook has to get behind the pawn, king has to stay somewhat near the middle, and white doesn't really have time to stop the pawn and get his own pawns going. So I kind of analyzed it deeper, but... Um, yeah, eventually I figured out black is holding the draw. Um, definitely a tough one, not really a rook endgame I wanted to enter from afar, but instructive to see that even, even this can be holding. And so, yeah, not really liking any of this, and now move 38, I'm in heavy time pressure because I spent all my time earlier. I decide to go knight d8, which uh, I didn't love the looks of earlier, but I felt like actually maybe it's okay. I was expecting bishop takes g7, king takes, and here if white takes on f5, he doesn't take the knight with check, so now I just take on b5, and, and of course it's an easy draw. Um, so I was actually expecting, uh, I think, takes on uh, g7 and rook b8 here, um, but I felt like black should be uh, should be okay. Yeah, for example, knight e6 takes knight f4, and I felt like actually I'm getting some some nice counterplay. Um, lo and behold, uh, I, I totally missed that white just has a winning shot, bishop takes f5. Actually, if it wasn't for this one, black would be okay, but this one is a real killer. Uh, of course, I can't take here because this is hanging. Um, and uh, in my mind, I thought, oh, it's not possible because of bishop takes c3, uh, but I simply overlooked that white can throw in bishop e6 check. And uh, he wins the rook, up in exchange, everything's hanging, and yeah, it's just game over. So that was unfortunate. Bishop takes f5, and uh, yeah, black is just just lost. Position collapses. I tried king f7, but rook c7 check. I have to go king e8 so that he doesn't take on g7 with check. Um, but now he takes on e4. I gave this check. I traded bishops here, and uh, I took on b5. Um, and he's able to take on h7 at the end. So two pawns down, and of course white has these two very strong connected pass pawns in the center. I realized it's uh, completely lost. Um, I thought about resigning here because, yeah, I just felt like I had no chances, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like <laughs> if the colors were reversed, you know, he wouldn't resign against me. He would kind of make me prove it. And uh, my rule for kind of like deciding when to resign is uh, I don't really resign if I feel like the position still requires at least some technique. And so I just wanted to force him to play it out and kind of like show me, you know, the, the plan. I mean, he's a 2600 GM. He, he has excellent technique. I've seen like a few of his end games. Uh, he's very, very strong. Uh, in fact, he beat uh, Anand in a famous game several years ago in Gibraltar. Uh, when I think he wasn't even uh, a GM yet. And uh, really like the quietest of end games. You think it was completely dead drawn and he ends up, you know, outplaying Vichy. So, so I knew his technique was very good. And I kind of just wanted him to show me how exactly white should convert the position because it's not like you know super trivial i do have a pass pawn he has to kind of um defend against this one but yeah he made it look pretty simple um so i play 96 e3 to uh restrict the knight king e7 just trying to get the king in bishop d3 rook b2 and uh, now he pushes h4 now that my rook cannot go to h5 and kind of harass this pawn he just starts pushing his outside passer it's gonna force me to deal with it and then his rook can kind of get inactive and yeah it's really bad had i gone this way then i think white would just play something um like rook c6 for example and yeah very hard for me to uh to hold on to this pawn um so yeah i went rook b2 h4 i pushed this one h5 b4 he goes rook c6 uh rook d2 bishop f5 
kind of breaking my, my construction, knight g5, and uh, now rook b6. And here I decided to resign because now it is getting actually very, very simple for white. Uh, he's starting to take my pawn. If I go rook to b2 here, then I'm pretty sure he just goes h6. And yeah, I just have no way of stopping this uh, h pawn anymore. I'm going to have to give up my knight for it. And then, of course, um, white's extra piece should decide. And it's just very difficult for me to do anything with the b pawn. The bishop controls the queening square. And yeah, pretty much impossible for, for me to make progress with this one. Um, so yeah, after rook b6, that was, uh, that was game over. So, really interesting game. I mean, I definitely felt like I had my chances there uh, in the middle game, and I felt like I, I defended uh, pretty well, all things considered. But, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? A lot of times, it, when you're under pressure the whole game, your opponent hits you with some absolute, you know, tactical shot, G4. And, uh, yeah, if you're not able to deal with it, you know, position can, can simply uh, collapse just like that. Uh, but, okay, after this round, I was on 3 out of 5. I'm actually recording this um, before the end of round nine, <laughs> but uh, a little bit behind. But yeah, I had to kind of rest up and prep for my other games. But hopefully I'll be back with more videos soon and uh, I'll be able to show the rest of the games as well. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.